Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Super Robot Joaquin Mazinga Z. So if, like me, you grew up in Britain in the 1980s, you look at this and you go, what? But in other parts of the world, like Japan, like in the States, this is an all-time classic. And as someone I have to thank for this, my good friend on YouTube, and I'm sure he's yours too, Mad Wobber. He introduced me to these, and he did it with such passion and enthusiasm, I could not help but get the bug. So I decided to pick one up and see what all the fuss was about. So the character Mazinga Z is from a Japanese anime from the early 70s, way before my time. And he was also one of the robots that featured heavily in the giant Shogun Warriors line that again passed by me completely. So this is actually the later released Mazinga Z. The original Super Robot Chigokin version came with a base and had a slightly different box to this. So these figures are made by Bandai Tamashi Nations in Japan, but they're readily available in the States, and if you're an online shopper, they're not that hard to get hold of. So this is the back of the box, and we can see some of the super posability of this robot, some of the accessories, and there's also some accessories down on the right there that this figure doesn't actually come with. Now Mad Wobber told me if you're going to get this figure, you've got to get the accessory set that comes with it. So I did what I was told, and here it is. This set comes with the Jets Grander, the Q Kagata Rocket Punch, and the Rocket Effect parts. So this is the figure out of the box without all the attachments added. And he looks quite big there. But when you bring in, this is a 6 inch Black Series Boba Fett, you can see just how big this figure is. Not very big at all really but he certainly does pack a punch. So you might be noticing this big gap in the top of his head there. That's because he comes with this separate little shuttle that goes inside his head. And you can see this has got some nice paint on it for all it is absolutely tiny. And it's a little bit tricky, but that basically lands in his head. And you can push that down so it locks into place. And that is where the pilot sits that controls the giant robot. So these figures have a number of selling points, the first one being the immaculate paint jobs. The red is absolutely stunning, the black is painted to perfection. The only paint that's slightly short of amazing is the silver colour, but even that is pretty damn nice. And the second selling point for these figures is the die cast content. The original figures were solid die cast back in the 70s, they didn't have the posability that these figures do. But on this release, the die cast is restricted to some of the joints and the leg sections. And that gives this figure a hell of a lot of weight. Another selling point for these figures is the level of detail. On such a small scale, it's absolutely phenomenal. You can see quite a bit on the head there. But something that really impresses me, if we look under his feet, you can see the little rocket booster things under there. These look absolutely amazing. And then we come to articulation. And it's ridiculous on these figures. If we look at his head, you can see that that tilts all the way around. But not only that, the neck actually moves as well. So the range of motion on these is crazy. You can have him almost looking up when he's flying. He can look right down to the ground. Any way you want to, you've got it covered. As for the arms, the articulation is absolutely crazy as well. Not only can you move it like you would with any old figure, but you can also bring that joint up and down. You can move it forwards and backwards within itself. So in effect you can bring the arms all the way anywhere you want them to be. It then turns at the bicep there as well. And if you look at the elbow joints, they've actually got a separate panel that folds in on itself when you tilt the arm. And then the fist, these are actually removable, so you've got your standard ball joint on there. They're a little bit tough, but there you can see, they just plug on and off as you want them to. And this figure comes with a ton of different hands. As for the torso, we have a rocker there, and that's pretty well pausable. And it also moves at the bottom section as well. But not only that, we can give it a little push, and that extends it even more, so we can crunch it right down. Move it right back. But you cannot see any joints on this. It looks fantastic. And then we have these leg joints. And you can see there we can go forward so far. 
we can go backwards so far and they also turn on themselves but if that's not enough for you you can actually pull them out a little bit which gives you even more range going forwards going backwards and if you don't want to use it you can push it back into itself then we have these knees and if you look at the back we've got the knees there you can see the join and there's this little panel so you can go so far back and then normally you would hit that panel but no collapsible panel gives you another extra click even further and for those of you who like to hear the click listen to this and even the ankles you've got tons of movement there forwards backwards you can angle it that way you can angle it that way you can do whatever you want with this figure and it'll hold its position perfectly so I mentioned this figure comes with alternate hands so these are the ones that come when you get it in the box a pair of fists and we can swap them out for this pair of grasping open hands and we also get this pair of hands which are brilliant for holding weapons and this is the weapon he comes with this absolutely stunning chromed out sword or you can mix and match the hands and pull off this amazing looking pose that's featured on the box art but we're not done yet guys, we have this super rocket punch accessory. So what we need to do is unplug the right hand. And then we can add this piece which is hollow inside. And that will slip over and plug into that arm there. And then we can add this giant rocket punching fist. It is a little tough to do but it does go in. And then we've got one massive looking fist there, which you can have as a closed fist. Or you even get the option to have this as an open hand as well. So that pretty much covers all the bits that come with the figure. But let's take a look at the expansion pack and see what else we've got. So first off we get the left hand version of the giant arm and fist. We also get that in open hand option as well. But more interestingly we get these pieces. And these are to simulate the rocket punch action. We actually get four of these as well, which is pretty nice. You're obviously only going to use one per arm, so you've got enough here to use with some of the other figures. And how these work, you simply pull out the arm. And that leaves you an open socket there, which allows you to plug that in. And then on the other end, you can plug the giant fist. So you've now got the rocket fire in action. The rocket punch action can make him a little front heavy, but he's got such great articulation that you can always find a way around that and get him to stand up properly. And if you want, you can even go for double rocket punch action. But it doesn't end there. We also get this little belt that attaches around his waist like this. It's all one piece and it just clips together at the front. And you'll notice he has a little hole on his back and that is so you can attach the Scrander jetpack. Now this is very, very delicate. The main section's not too bad, but it has a couple of little fins on it that look really fragile. And with that locked in place, we can then add the wings. And again, the paint job on these is absolutely stunning. And we also have one for this side. And now we can see him with the Scrander in all its glory. And this does look fantastic. You don't see this paint job on any old figure. And if we look at the back, you can see just how finely detailed this is. There's also a lot of sharp edges, so you do have to be a little bit careful. And when you give him the scrander and the sword, he just looks absolutely fantastic. And there is one final little piece to show you. You can see that hole in the back of him there. We get this little clip. And it's a little tricky to do with the scrander on. But we clip that into his back. And that then allows you to attach him to an Act 5 Tamashi stage. So there you have it guys, the Super Robot Chigokin Mazinga Z. Big thanks to Mad Wobber for getting me into these, I'm absolutely loving every minute of it. If you don't know who he is, check down the link in the description. Go check him out, top fella. This has been Luke, thanks for watching.